The story of the Tower of Babel mirrors the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. At Pentecost, God gives common purpose and understanding, whereas at Babel, God frustrates people's plans and confuses communication. Yet like Acts 2, the intriguing tale of Genesis 11 has much to teach us about the common good. The story starts by highlighting a common endeavour. The thing that stands out though is that the people's objective is the wrong one. This wrong decision is the culmination of a series of misguided choices stretching back to the beginning of Genesis. In the beginning God created a world that was good. But Adam and Eve, then Cain, then everyone in the time of Noah chose badly. Even the new start after the flood didn't change things. Instead of recognising the glory of God's name, Genesis 11 tells how the new residents of the region of Shinar wanted to make a name for themselves by building a tower with its top in the heavens. They had a common project, certainly, but it was in pursuit of their own interests and reputation. We might say, instead of a common good, they sought a common bad. Here is a key lesson. Working for the common good involves making sure we are pursuing things that are truly good. If our aims are important, how should they be decided? A feature of doing things with others is that we often don't agree about what to do or how to do it. The process of negotiation and agreement can be complicated. The Babel project was also a result of negotiation. First to make bricks and then to agree what to do with the bricks. Unfortunately though, the people didn't consult God about their plans. Deciding how to live together and making decisions that allow the whole community to flourish takes us into the realm of politics. Politics can be a noble activity if it is practiced with a vocation for the common good. Participating in civic society is an important means of forging common bonds, because working together builds community. In a diverse or divided society, it is essential. One of the joys of reading the Bible is its humour, and the Tower of Babel story contains some delightful irony. Come, said the people, first to make bricks and then to build a city with a tower, whose top reaches the heavens. They thought it was so very high, but God says, come, let us go down. He had to descend just to see it. When God descended, he saw people pursuing the wrong thing and confounded their communication, so that instead of a language in common, the Babel builders shared their need for God. God's action creates a new architecture for people's relations. His judgment frees them from the dominance of vanity projects enabling them to decide common aims locally. Perhaps this should make us suspicious of grandiose or utopian visions, of heaven on earth, or earth reaching to heaven, and more sympathetic to embracing many ways of working for good. At the very least, the story of the Tower of Babel prompts us to interrogate our aspirations. Are our objectives self-aggrandizing, or do they serve the common good? Surely this ancient story is one for our times. Asking pointed questions about our aims helps us to stay faithful to God. The Old Testament prophets critiqued and cajoled the people of God for this very reason. 